welcome you wherever you are if you're joining uh, this uh, very moment uh, we are here again yet another time another show that is the cardinal talk show that comes to you on Loro television network at this particular time every single uh, sunday as usual this is where we talk matters politics we don't only talk about politics but we ventilate so deeply into what is affecting our politics by affecting our politics it affects us as a people therefore we have every inherent responsibility to ensure that this politics is well ventilated, is well analyzed, is well diagonized for the benefit of our understanding. And today, as we talk, I have with me here guests who are apparently are coming from different or divergent political standpoints. This, uh, to say, are people who look at politics in very different ways. However, I'll give them time to introduce themselves. Before that, today we want to see what political parties mean to this country. Are they of any benefit? Are they fostering political party democracy in Kenya? Are we seeing ideologies at play? Or are we only looking at uh, what is supposed to be a crumbling house of cards where everybody feels and does what he or she feels because of the whims of the party leader? Don't forget, the BBI onslaught is on. We'll be venturing into that as well. Therefore, it's time to introduce my guests. And as usual, I'll start uh, with my guest on the right. It is now your time to tell us your name and perhaps or your political standpoint, your political party, and uh, maybe if you feel you can tell us something about your profession. There's nothing bad in that. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Nick. Yeah. Oh, my name is Okeo Rolvix from Miguri County. I'm the NC Youth Leader uh, nationwide. Uh, I'm a finance guy. I did my finance in the University of Nairobi. And uh, I support Musale Mudavadi and his agenda on the economy of this country. And uh, I wish him well in 2022 elections. And moving forward, I think we are going to have a, a very good discussion moving forward with my colleague. Thank you very much, Nick. On point, on point. On my left is somebody I respect so much uh, because uh, is, uh, my senior is one of our very able mentors who made uh, broadcasting in this country what it is today and uh, we cherish every time and moment that we have with him. However, today is seated here in a different capacity, not as a broadcaster anyway, but also as an analyst who seem, not who seem, but who belongs to the Jubilee side of things. Today we want to see what it is. Yes, sir. Point of introduction. Thank you, <laughs> And uh, our very valuable audience, mm -hmm. I'm called Obiambo Makovit. It's not my first time to be here. Yeah. I've been here on several occasions on the invitation of Nick. Yeah. And uh, I, I hold different tags. Uh, I'm an immediate former director at Chairman El Sugar. Yeah. I was appointed to be a director there by the Jubilee government. Yes, so it's not bad that you call me um, an affiliate uh, or uh, as, as, uh, a supporter of the administration party. So it's a, it, I'm, I'm happy to reunite with our audiences again to share on the issues that uh, you have for us this Sunday. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, uh, a viewer, you know, this country, each and every moment, baffles you when you look at the political trends and happenings it's becoming very very obvious that this election is going to be very fiery why because of factors that are out there look at what has happened just this week we saw in machakos politics that doesn't have tolerance in them politics that actually defies everything we've seen people we've seen people crossing over and hoping from parties from end to end and it doesn't really augur well for a nation that is still nurturing a young democracy like ours to see our political parties in this kind of disarray. I want to bring in Mr. Okeo from ANC. I don't know, ANC as a party, you have your beliefs, you have your ideologies and I can always relate it to economy. Your party leader is somebody who is so much passionate, is passionate about our economy. What actually makes ANC what it is. You know, most guys don't even understand what ANC stands for. Thank you very much, Nick. Uh, remember in 2007, when uh, our party leader, Salim Davadi, uh, joined uh, pol uh, political arena, he stood for, he stood majorly for the economy of this country. And even up to now, he's still 
fighting very much for the economy to revive. You remember, the debt ceiling of this country now is standing at 9 trillion and against our budget of 3 trillion. It means we have a, a very big gap whereby the collections from the government, from the government agencies, for example, the KRA and the other collection points of this government, cannot finance the economy of this country. And so far, we are paying more debts outside there for, for example, debts in China and other countries. You find that those debts were taken in terms of uh, dollars. And right now, even if you check the dollar rate, today the dollar rate is one Kenyan shilling against 100 at 10. And every time you, the dollar goes up, the, the, the more the debt we pay. So at the end of the day, you will find that these issues will trickle down to the normal manainchi. And at the end of the day, the normal manainchi will suffer a lot. That's why our party leader, uh, Musala Mudavadi, has come out strongly to defend the economy of this country and try as much as possible so that we, we have some sanity in terms of, uh, in terms of borrowing. So that so, Kenyan people do not suffer much. So, so you, your party is advocating for prudent physical discipline. Rather, what, what's lacking, according to your party and the party leader, is that we don't have uh, physical discipline in our management as a country, yeah. in our matters uh, of uh, government. That's what you guys are projecting so vividly, and you want it addressed. Yeah, we want it addressed in such that uh, the money which is borrowed also, the way it is being used, you find that it is being misused by the government through corruption, with cartels, and this money, at the end of the day, it is paid out. It is Kenyan taxpayers who suffer at the end of the day. We want to find a way in which by, if we borrow money, we use it accordingly, so that we, 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 the, the, the economic growth of this country is sustainable. Well, on my left, uh, maybe I now bring in uh, uh, Mr. Marco Witi, who is our immediate former director of Chimili Sugar Company. Uh, you've been in this administration. Actually, you are an inside of this administration that uh, ANC is accusing of actually running down the economy. No, that might not be the truth, or it could be the truth, I know. But then, exactly, what does Jubilee, or what did Jubilee stand for? Remind Kenyans, because uh, things are getting lost here. ANC has just told us there is a push for the economic well-being of this country. Jubilee, if I might say, many guys might not remember what it stood for. Maybe it's major line as a political, uh, as a political party. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. I think it's also good to, to, to remind ourselves that uh, Jubilee, campaigned on the milestones on, oh, you know, economic development. And uh, it is during the Jubilee reign that Kenya was declared a middle-income country. You know, that is, I don't know whether Kenya... Are we still there? Are we still there? Yes, yes, yes. You know, middle once, income, once you have been... Middle-income yeah, country. Yes. Mm -hmm. Once you have been declared a middle-income country... By World Bank. Yes. Yeah. You stay as a middle-income country. And I think that is what has led into the spree of borrowing. Because you must enhance your infrastructure, you must enhance your manufacturing, you must enhance your, you know, everything that, and they want to build the capacity of the people that will make you retain the middle income status of that country. And I think Kenyans can remember very well, even in their local areas, the whole of this country is very big. It's 572,000 square kilometers. You will, you will find a construction, either a road construction or a, a power construction going on in your area. That is for a fact. I think even ANC can bear that witness. And we have seen so many houses, so many households being fed to, with power, you see, in the last mile project, or many schools have been powered under uh, the last mile project, and, and it's being done by our own members of parliament. Okay. So a lot of things have been happening. There are many houses which are being constructed, because a ha housing is one of the areas that was a major area. The medical you know, provision, yeah, universal health care, you know, there's a lot of campaigns that have been going on to put everybody on uh, NHIF so that you can get covered. 
by the of course the management is another thing whether you talk about NHIF and and, 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 and and what goes on there which is an actually a skill of the people who have been entrusted with those positions to run but i think it it has been a very good intention by this government to provide free education expand education free free education really yes 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 how is it free really. to what extent is it free um it it is it is not very free it's not actually free it's not actually free yeah. but if you look at the actual cost of education if it was supposed to be borne by the talent himself then it would be very expensive there's a lot of subsidies that go on okay. it would not be very free yeah maybe subsidies yeah yes yeah. because this but if your child goes on to a day school right there are very few things that the head teacher will look for from you you will not be asked to pay anything about tuition. <laughs> maybe, that's maybe, that's maybe, maybe that, that's actually the contrary of uh, of happenings here. No, no, and, okay. uh, and and if, and if yeah. you talk to parents outside here, you will get a really different view of things. Yeah. Parents are crying here. Even just recently, when schools were opening on the fourth of January last month, there were it was hear and cry from parents that you know it was becoming so exorbitant to return the kids to school. In fact, even the masks. That the, that the government promised that should give to kids we were not given, uh, Mr. Makowiti. I don't know how, at what point you think it's, this education has been provided for free for our people. That's why I've said if your child is in day school, in day school, yeah, if your child is in day school, what is expected of you to provide as a parent are the meals, right, the uniforms, and maybe a pen because even the books are provided. There are, there are all textbooks for every child. There are, pri there are, there are uh, exercise books for every child. They keep that. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, uh, gentlemen, I didn't want us to go so much into what uh, has been done, what hasn't been done by Jubilee and any other opposing sides. Mm -hmm. Our discussion today was now, now that we've given at least a brief overview of what the political parties are, do you think what we are seeing in terms of behavior of political leaders actually helps in maintaining what is supposed to be a political party. Take a point uh, of discussion, and this is Jubilee, for instance. Now, uh, Jubilee is a divided house where we are seeing everybody is running amok. Uh, in fact, it's now, uh, it's, it's now on a free fall that you pick whatever you can, and then shout the loudest you can, and then check out. And uh, in any political discourse, there should be decorum. In any political dispensation, there must be order. Where is order in Jubilee right now? And uh, is it to say that Jubilee would not actually have very strong foundations of its formation? Jubilee had very good foundations and mm. their formation. <coughs> and I think Jubilee <coughs> is one of those political parties that for, for some time during the initial stages of the formation, we thought would really be a party for the decades to come. Because I saw efforts uh, of uh, sending some of the party officials to China to go and study the models the of, of, yeah, the <laughs> of the communist party. I remember that. I remember yes, that. Yes, they went to South Africa to study the model of the ANC party mm -hmm. because I think they were futuristic. Mm -hmm. What became later on about to believe myself, I don't know. I don't call the brief for Rafael to be used the Secretary General. Mm -hmm. But they are the main engines and the people who run the party. What I know, which is also in the public domain, is that members of the Jubilee Party have been complaining that they don't hold meetings, they don't hold parliamentary group meetings, and those are the areas of sanitation. So if there are issues that are coming up, then in those meetings, then they are supposed to sanitize, they are supposed to ventilate so that the party runs. I, 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 don't, I don't remember since 2017, whether you believe has held any meeting. So anybody who is coming up now... What, what meeting are you referring to? Is it a parliamentary group meeting? Is it the executive meeting? Is it the next meeting for Jubilee? What it All about? those. The only meeting that... Actually, the only active party mm. organ that works very well in Jubilee is the disciplinary committee. <laughs> Chaired by who now? Uh, or who, who, who are the members? Some, but in, in, that, in that committee, mm. there, there are people whom they replaced. So it means people are indisciplined in Jubilee. I don't think they are indisciplined. I don't want to talk for anyone, yeah. right? But let me tell you, when we talk about party policies, we'll talk about party rules and regulations. Yeah. Those are people's ideas that were put in writing and then they agreed on it, right? 
Yeah. Those policies are not from heaven. But, not but, 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 but Mr. Makowiti, as a Jubilee member, <clears throat> do you think you are bound by the rules and regulations of that party to remain orderly as much as it is? Even if the house is burning, you should actually see how you're putting that fire off without making so much noise and behaving sometimes so badly before the public. If you are in, I don't really think, well, behaving badly or behaving well is always very relative. What do you mean is relative? Because if there is fire and you are inside, you are also fighting for survival. You could even break the window. So you guys are so, breaking everything. So when you are breaking, no, when you are breaking the window, <laughs> that could be a bad behavior. But you are actually fighting for your life. You are fighting for your life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so it is run, run because Irungu Kangata has just taken off. Murkomen took off. Kikika, Susan took off. So many and people yeah. have taken off, and yeah. the people who have remained are so few. Yeah. And as a leader and the manager of the party, you should be asking yourself, mm -hmm. how comes the people who have run away are more than the people who are remaining? What's your take? What's your take, uh, sir? Because there is no way a political party that is ruling mm -hmm. is only happening mm -hmm. in Kenya, where a ruling party is disintegrating to this magnitude. How is it even possible? We have a, a, a party where the deputy president, who is, the, who is the second in command in terms of the party hierarchy, calls a PG meeting of his own. Then the president, who is the party leader, calls another PG meeting in state house. I mean, what is all this? Uh, we are seeing in Nick, this party. Nick, as an ANC member or as a political as a political analyst, yeah. what do you think is the problem with this house jubilee? Because we must help jubilee out of this mess. Nick, uh, the problem in jubilee is a very big problem because this problem has not started today. They have not held meetings. They have not done any consultation with the, with the people, members of jubilee. They are always fighting, and it is because of the lack of discipline especially from the deputy party leader, mm -hmm. uh, Dr. William Ruto. He does not give... You, you point accusing fingers at him as the person wrecking the boat from... Yeah, he's the person wrecking the boat because of the handshake. You know, this country has been taken over by cartels. And there are people, there are a group of people who are supporting Ruto. They are behind Ruto because of uh, the nature of the, his, his, his nature of fighting. So, <coughs> Jubilee, right now, it is not, you, you can't say it is a, a decent house. They are fighting all over. Yeah, I, I, I don't now, now the question is, Margaret, you, you love your, you know, just for the break. Now, now uh, from ANC point of view, yeah. and as a political analyst, yeah. we know you, you accuse Deputy President William Ruto, and again you say they've never had meetings. Yeah. These people are, don't consult. Yeah. These people don't have what is supposed to be the procedural way of handling party internal party matters. Yeah. And this one says one thing that uh, the party leader seems to have lost it all because the back stops with the party leader. Yeah. He should call these meetings. He should chair these meetings. He should address the this, uh, um, the, the disenchantment among the members. In your in, in your party you know, ANC, how do you do it differently? Yeah, have you seen any any ANC guys fighting outside there? Yeah, but we had we had the other day shouting from the rooftops well, about uh, being suspended. You see, yeah, we, we, we had the Let me come in. <laughs> Let me come in with my input. Yeah. One, it's it's very unfair to ask uh, an, an an ANC uh, youth uh, na official mm. about what is happening inside Jubilee. No, I'm one, from, from his political point of it view, it is very important to to acknowledge that ANC is not a Jubilee peer in terms of magnitude, in terms of numbers. There are very few. There are actually, I am shocked that he comes from Migori because ANC is in Western Kenya. No, but he comes from Migori. Yes. And he's a national leader of the yeah, party. That's, the, that, that's what is surprising me. You're surprised? Yes. Because they don't have, <laughs> they, they don't have, they don't have a national outlook. Yeah. Every time Mudavadi holds a me meeting, mm -hmm. he's in Kakamega. No. How comes he has never held a meeting in Kisumu? He has never held a meeting in, in Nairobi. Migori, even in Migori where he comes from. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So they don't have a national outlook. Okay. So they are a minority and so you don't expect people to fight yeah. where there are no people. That's one. Two, <laughs> ANC is not the best person to ask about the behavior of people in Jubilee mm -hmm. because I know one of their uh, MPs is the one who said that I want to sponsor a motion to impeach mm -hmm. the deputy president. So let me take and sign. The noise in Jubilee is not because of indiscipline, but it, it's a succession noise. The president is supposed to go home, and ANC is waiting for their leader to be endorsed. 
Really? No. And the yeah, deputy yeah, president, yeah, yeah. the deputy <laughs> president, yeah, is not allowing great. it. That is very because claim because nobody is waiting to be endorsed. But Everyone why are you not? Why are you not campaigning? You are not campaigning. Mudavadi is campaigning all over. Where? Even in Mombasa. Mudavadi was there the last week in Mombasa. This guy has been campaigning. Nobody, everybody knows about Musa. Then we need to blame Nick and because now, they did not give them publicity. <laughs> no, I mean, he speaks for the he speaks for the party as a national as a national leader. But uh, now let's let, let's put, let's look, put things in perspective. Really, I, I, I don't know. Uh, Jubilee is in, is interesting. You know, it's, it's got the highest turnover of uh, leader leaders of majority who have actually gone the other side. Yes. And uh, do you think it turned as well for William Ruto? Because you are supposed to be the principal assistant to the president, and you keep always having your own agenda, your own business, running it like there is nobody you're supposed to be answering to. Is this does it mean that Jubilee has become so idle? You guys don't have work to do, and what you can do is only politics. I I I think um, a lot of things in terms of development has been done by Jubilee. Secondly, the, the politics of Jubilee do not interfere with the development of the country because really yeah it has been said have you seen the contractors stopping work because there's politics no they are working work is going on have you seen doctors stop treating uh, patients because there's politics no so we also need to justify these things the the country is running all projects are ongoing the people who are doing last mile connections are, 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 do, are going because once uh, a, a government you know, plan has been rolled out. It actually continues. Nothing stops. But, but what, uh, it's, what, what is now capturing people's, you know, Kenyans, Kenya is a very political community. They focus more on politics and ignore even some of the things that go on on the ground. But the battle for succession has already started in earnest. So what you really call in discipline is actually realignment for succession to replace... 18 months and, relations. Yes, because... The handshake came in. Was it a bad thing? The handshake was not a bad thing. Yeah. Uh, I would not stand in you know, accuse to say the handshake was a bad thing. Mm -hmm. Because at some point we had lost peace after the 2017 elections. Yeah. And uh, the economy was not doing so well because of the noise around it. So when the handshake was done, there was a lot of uh, harmony, there was a lot of peace. and. Activities resumed very well, so I would say it was not a bad it thing. It was not a bad thing. Yes, but now, uh, when they came up with the BBI, mm -hmm. right? Who is they? <laughs> the handshakers. <laughs> no, I mean uh, the, the, the handshakers. The president was part of this thing. Yeah. But his boss Uru Kenyatta has said not once, not twice that he was briefed. He knew about this thing. He himself has said on very many occasions that you know the handshake was good for the country. I it wonder. Is, I, I wonder why. I wonder why BBI becomes a big challenge and becomes a bone of contention. It's very when, to trust uh, what the all, leader all, says. All, 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 all don't sir. Sometimes you people baffle me as politicians. Just how do you divorce Anshek from BBI? And why is BBI a devil and Anshek was uh, was an angel? I mean, just at what point are you making the difference? Um, the BBI is a good document, yeah. right? But I really think the issues that are carried within the BBI are actually the battlefront for succession. The details. The details. And people are not focusing on the details of the BBI that brings the battlefront for this succession. You saw one of the people who is fronting uh, the BBI and is also one of the people who is eyeing the succession battle is Gideon Moy. Right? What okay, happened in Barigo yesterday with the let's, BBI let's, in his own let's, county? Let's pull down, let's pull down. Let's it was. We are, coming, we are coming to BBI. We are coming yeah. to BBI after the break. Yeah. Uh, but uh, again, when we come before, uh, I mean after the break, I want us to really interrogate what is supposed to be party ideologies. And uh, are we people subscribing to any ideologies as a people, or we just want to coalesce around individuals and call them political parties? This is a question that we must answer for the benefit of our people to get to know exactly why we are in political parties. Okay, and why are they in existence? Just <laughs> after the break, okay. you will hold on. We are going for the break. It's uh, becoming something that, uh, uh, to some extent, even Maki 
sometimes you want to get results in this, this debate and then you end up everyone having more confusion because politicians thrive in this confusion but on this show today they must give us what is supposed to be the black and white of matters political party are they based on any ideology i don't know do you think they are personality driven i don't know do you think they are up to any good for kenyans they will come and tell us before we get to bbi and how baringo <laughs> was even more deadly <laughs> Welcome, uh, viewers. If you're joining for the second bit of this show, it is the Cardinal Talk Show that comes to you on Loro TV at this particular moment. Hashtag Cardinal Talk Show. That is the hashtag. You can also tweet. You can also join us on Facebook. Uh, our Facebook page is Lolwe TV. Twitter handle is at Lolwe TV. Or you can do it at, on my Twitter handle at NicoKello7. All these frontiers will help us actually get uh, your ideas as a participant or as a viewer in this show. We are on. And uh, I'm taking on here guys from a uh, guy from ANC, which is a Mani National Congress, and uh, a stalwart of the Jubilee Party, who is Mr. Marco Witi. They are all here, you know, <laughs> challenging one another. However, what we want to address now, what are these political parties meant for? Because we've seen turnover of parties over and over again. The other day it was TNA, today's Jubilee, now or something like ODA is coming in, UDA and other things are cropping up. So, does the political parties make any sense to us uh, from the ANC point Nick, of view? If you look at the American politics, mm -hmm. you can either be a Republican or a, a Democrat. Democrat. And that is very healthy for that country. And in Kenya, uh, you find that uh, we have so many political parties. And this is, it was good, it was a good idea. But the problem now comes in whereby you, you find a politician, today is in a Jubilee, tomorrow is in a Uda. Right now you look at Jubilee, you don't know whether it is Jubilee Uda, you don't know whether it is Jubilee what. It is confusing to the local Monainji. And we want a situation whereby if we have a political party, and we know the ideologies for these political parties, one, two, three, like for ANC party. We stand very firmly for uh, the economy of the country. My friend was talking about uh, how Jubilee is doing uh, the projects. And if you look at this, if you dig down these projects, you find that they are being done at inflated costs, which is affecting the Manaiji. And uh, you find that at the end of the day, it is the Wanjikus who are suffering on the ground. And uh, uh, the, the, the people the people who are heading these political parties, they are enjoying the money. Some of the money are borrowed money. So we want a situation whereby if we form a political party, it is something which has agenda and is there to stay. Note that today I'm in ODM, tomorrow I'm jumping to another party, confusing the people. And also number two, political parties would not, not be for individuals. For example, today, Raila is ODM. If Raila is not there, there is no ODM. Jubilee is, uh, is, 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 is Uru Kenyatta. If Uru Kenyatta is not there, Jubilee is dead. Now, Ruto is uh, moving out of Jubilee, he's going to Uda. Let's say today that uh, Ruto is not there. Shall we have Uda? We shall not have Uda. Even for, for, for ANC, if today Musalia is not there, we will not be talking about ANC. Why? And that is and not, you are here as national leader and you say that is, you are here as excuse me, you are here as yes. national leader and again you are pleading that this is what it, is, it is wrong. your party is personality driven. I mean how, how are you saying that? It is wrong. It is the so, totality. So, so you don't also believe in any ideologies of ANC party. The ideology is there. It yeah. is all about the do you believe, fixing, uh, do you fixing. believe? I believe in fixing. If Musalam Dabani today went out of ANC, would you still remain in ANC? I should remain in ANC because of the ideology. You uh, will you remain in ANC? Yes, because of the ideology. We mm -hmm. want to fix the economy of this country. And you Whether like... Musalia is there or not. That, is, that should drive the people. It should not be that uh, if, if Musalia is not there, then ANC is not there. ANC is built on ideology of fixing the economy of this country. 
And Musalia was the finance minister. During his tenure, we saw what happened in Kenya. This guy done a lot of work for the country. And we want the position of, uh, uh, we want a situation whereby politics, political parties, when we form a political party, it has a very big agenda, maybe one, two, three, four agendas, and they work towards it. We don't want a situation whereby people fight today, they are, they are fighting for money or something. Uh, uh, Mr. Makoviti, uh, in this regard, yeah. we look at the existence of these parties and uh, we still really can't cut out what is their purpose of existence yeah. because they hardly survive beyond five years. Now, what is ailing our political party democracy? What else our political party democracy need, and even to our audiences that really said they wanted answers, yeah. is the fact that they are personality based. Yeah. Our political parties are run based on personalities. Today, and you have seen, when uh, the issue of BBI came about, yeah. and uh, it is fronted by Raila Amolo Odinga, right? Who is ODM? So uh, Raila, Raila is ODM. Raila is ODM. And like, my like friend is, is, yeah, 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 yes, confirm that ANC is also Muslim. It, it's, it's, it's a very serious state of things to actually, you know, admit. Yeah, and you, you saw the people of Siaya pass the BBI bill even without reading through it. You're not in Siaya, Mako. You're not in Siaya. No, 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 no. I know the context. No. The context Give credit to people of Siaya for having done something about the BBI. I know you come you, from Kisumu. You, I, I come from Kisumu County. <laughs> there are no problem. But now, I'm asking. You weren't even there. You didn't participate there as a legislator. You are not an MC. I know yeah. for a fact yeah. that our people on the ground have a very poor reading culture. That is not a mistake. Don't, don't judge them. They even say, it's on public note, that yeah. Kaja Komos a song. Mm. Once Raila has read, mm -hmm. we have read. Yeah. So Raila, Raila reads for them. Raila reads for them. <laughs> but the good thing here is, uh, we are talking about the personality-based nature yeah. of our political parties. Yeah. Not that Raila is bad, mm. but Raila has always had very good intentions for this country. So they know whatever he aspires for, that must be good. So if this is what he wants, what are we petition? You get the point? Because they know it should serve people well, mm -hmm. which is a mistake. Because in BBI, if you look at the contents critically, there are things that are good and there are things that are very, very bad. You tell us that at the yeah. time that uh, that comes. But now, how then? Uh, why must they have political parties if all of them are? Because if Uru lives, he lives with the Jubilee. Uh, I mean, uh, if uh, whoever lives lives with the party, what is this that then must give us all this headache to have political parties and make noise about them? Political parties are a way of organizing the people, right? Yeah. There's no way you can have people participate in a political process without organizing them. Yeah. So you only organize and coordinate and mobilize them through a political party. The only mistake is that we organize them through political parties that are personality based. We should go beyond that and the way my friend is saying and organize them around ideologies of that party. I know the ideologies of ODM, they are social democrats. Social democrats. Yes, they are social democrats. And if you look at some of the things that they are united for, are very, very nice for this country. Yeah. Like mobilization of resources to go up to the, to the grassroots. Actually, they do better than most of us. Yeah. They do better than Jubilee. ODM does better than Jubilee. And if you look at ODM for now, uh, since 2005, when we went to the referendum with banana and orange, that was the birth of ODM. In 2007, when they participated in the election, they were a political party. This is 2020, a party that has lasted 15 years and is still very active. It means, much as their leader is still very active, he, the, the people around the leader would have taken time to make sure that they spread the ideology of what ODM stands for. They still see it as Raila, but some of us who are even in Jubilee can also still see the benefits of what ODM stands for. And it's very easy that I jump from Jubilee today and go to ODM and start spreading the message and the gospel of what ODM stands for better than even some of the people who are ODM members. Which is important. In Jubilee, we would have done the same. But there's some point of stagnation because the leaders feel this is the ruling party. 
then they must also participate in succession. When you want to manage succession in a political party, then unless people within that party agree with your mode and style and the person that you want to succeed, then there will be no noise. But if they don't agree, then that's the noise that we are now starting to see. And I told you this noise is about succession. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know why you like uh, sugarcoating it as a, a succession noise. It's actually not, it, th th this is actually bad manners, to, to say the least, because there's no way people of the same party would be pulling from different ends, even going as far as now calling people, calling themselves names within the same, same party, mm -hmm. and going out and, you know, uh, throwing every bad uh, talk to one another. Here mm -hmm. is also a case where we have a very intolerant uh, party leader, Mr. Uh, the, 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 His Excellency Mr. Uru Kenyatta. Uh, His Excellency seems not to want to get any divergent opinion from anybody. Uru Kenyatta right now uh, has, for, uh, has faced the chop uh, from <laughs> majority leader. The other day it was more common. I don't know how long it would take. Kimani Matangi, if he makes a mistake right now, he will face the chop again uh, 18 months to elections. How do you build the party, even, the, even your parliamentary participation, uh, your legislation? Legislative agenda in the house. How would you articulate them so well when you have so much turnover about your yeah. party leader, your party leader's decision to have very many majority leaders within a span of five years? There is something called uh, party loyalty, and for a party to function well, the soldiers in that party, even in a house, for this house to work well, the people living in that house, there must be a head who says this is supposed to be done. We are supposed to do this as a family. But if you find a family like the Jubilee, people are pulling towards different directions. This is what is bringing issues because they are looking at 2022. We are still not in 2022. We are still 18 months to 2022. In fact, William Ruto started the campaign way back. Immediately after elections, he started going around campaigning for 2022. As the president himself is, is, is implementing projects. You see now that, that's where the problem comes. So you'll find that they will be pulling to different divergent directions. The party leader is pulling this way, the, the, the deputy is pulling this way. We cannot have a decorum in such a family. So if, in <laughs> short, eh, if you work at all, if, if, if you are saying, saying Jubilee ju, ju, ju looks like a tower of Babel, yeah. it's complete confusion. Yeah, if, if they have to work, they have to tow the party line. There are policies. Do you think they can work now? Is it is it is it still it not, not too late? possible? For now, it is not possible. It's too late now. It's very late because now we have Uda. We didn't know that there will be another political party, and they have even failed a candidate in Matungu using the Uda the the the, 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 the Uda <laughs> and, and, and is the deputy president. It's so funny now, <laughs> Mr. Makowiti. Yeah. I want us to really leave this, <laughs> but again, it's to believe that actually is bringing this into perspective. Yes. Now, really, can't you people have some order now? But there's order. <laughs> this, end, this, this, this is what this you call end, order. Descent does not mean disorder. Is it there? Is this? Yeah, I mean, this is yeah, you know, I mean, no, no, no. Uh, if, if you hear the president say that senior members of his party are thieves and he's the leader, right? Is that order or disorder? That's disorder. You know? Yeah, so we follow the example of the party leader. So uh -huh. we must, so, so, we are loyal. So, so, so what you're trying to say is that Uru Kenyatta actually shows the way. Yes. When he says that he cannot hand over power to somebody who is corrupt, people are corrupt and thieves, then you support that. Do you know, that is, if, if such a statement mm -hmm. comes from the party leader, mm -hmm. who is the president, who controls all the organs that must be able to deal with such kind of things, mm -hmm. it, is, it is very awkward of him. Is he admitting failure? He is admitting failure. Because if you have the organ that investigates crime, that investigates stealing, and you have not arrested William Ruto and taken him to court because you know he steals, mm -hmm. for example, two billion a day, mm -hmm. what, what is your work? You should really resign. So it's not Ruto to resign, it's Ruto to resign. It is him, <laughs> because the one who brings this order. When Tangata tells him... Are you, are you, are you a member of Jubilee? When Tangata tells him... Are you a member of Jubilee? Exactly. So you, you want your party to resign because he he's, should. he's spotted somebody stealing? Because, but who, you know, when you say... when you, He actually is character assassinating members of the party. He needs to use the state agencies charged with those responsibilities to arrest and prosecute. But when you call someone a thief on a, in a public podium, 
you have the evidence why what are you doing Marco, is it really true do you, do you think there's, a, there's an iota of truth about what president Ruhiata was talking about no it is not true it's not true he is trying to manage the succession what Irungu Kangata did wrong was to tell him that BBI is unpopular in his area and he felt that was uh, was slighted. He removed him. The next person who will tell him mm. that BBI is unpopular is Kamano Matangi. Matangi. Because that's the truth on the ground. And but the issue is, is not uh, BBI, right? The issue is managing the succession. Yake Kumi, Yaruto Kumi, he has stand against it. But you know, there are only two charismatic leaders in this country that if you want to manage politics, you cannot manage without them. One is Raila Amolo Odinga, very charismatic. You cannot run this country without Raila Amolo Odinga. You can also not run this country without William Samoy Ruto. Do you buy that? No, I don't buy that. Why? I don't buy that. You know, Makowiti, that you are not being honest. Because in uh, last uh, elections, when NASA was formed, we had a very, a very vibrant, uh, a very vibrant political formation. formation. For example, Raila would have not done it himself without Musali Mdabadi, without Moses Wetangula, without uh, Kalonzo Musiok. So you you cannot write off. The three and say, right? You know, you don't get this. <laughs> <of course. laughs> Are you fighting for your party? I, 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 I think my <laughs> friend is being dishonest, but it's also good cool yeah. to cover a naked father, <laughs> which is, is very responsible. I agree with him. So so his father is naked. The, the father, <laughs> the father is, is, is politically very naked. Actually, he's waiting for endorsement. Without endorsing Musalia Mudavadi, Musalia Mudavadi can never be a president of this country. Remember. There was a time he had gone into political oblivion. Raila Aliada kam resuscitate akasema hata ngombe kama imevunjika ndani ya nini bado anaweza amuka. So msara alikuwa amevunjika. He was finished politically after running for uh, as a president in 2002. <laughs> Okay, guys. <laughs> but this yeah, country, okay, guys. We, don't do we, we have we have yeah. blue band babies. Mm -hmm. The first blue band baby in Kenyan politics is the current president. What do you mean blue band baby? They were not brought up in problems. They are not hustlers. I don't told you that being an hustler is a qualification for somebody to become a leader. I want to tell you, and I want to qualify it. If you are brought up in comfort then you don't know what it means to be scratched even by a thorn. You don't have a hardened personality. It's not true. Two, the next person is Gideon Moy. The third is Musalia Mudavadi. Are you talking about dynasties now? No, no, this. <laughs> I, I don't believe in the issue of dynasty. I believe in the issue of hustling. Yeah. Okay, what are, what are you hustling, 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 hustling I mean, what are you hustling for? Hustling, what are you hustling is for? going out, hmm. convincing people that what you want to do is right, what you stand for is right, so that they support you to achieve something beneficial. One, the chief hustler in this country, Chandra Raila Mondo Dinga. Raila Mondo Dinga so, 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 is a chief hustler. He just mm -hmm. doesn't know how to brand himself. As a hustler, because someone already has ran out with the tag, ran, ran away with the tag. Is, 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 is it even a, a tag to run with? Really? Exactly, because people identify very easily with the fact that we are hustling for our lives. Marco Witi, Marco Witi, let me just ask you. Yeah. Today in the twenty-first century, yeah. what is being coined as hustling mm. in this context yeah. actually means reinventing wheels that actually for now are not even supposed to be part of a first century story. You know, when you tell me things like kuna mamboga mahali, kuna yes. so what, so what, while the world is going completely digital in the next era, in fact in the next 10 years, there will be no sense of talking about mamboga and the rest. Mm -hmm. Now, are we up to speed with the changing of the world or we just want to make stories about this? Because to me, I want to believe that if the hustler you are supporting that's the thing you're supporting. Yes. If it's bringing for us the real change we want as a people going forward, not going backwards, then it's going to be right. Look at this scenario, Mr. Marco Witte. Yeah. And I want you to take this uh, in point. Yeah. Even today, uh, your kid at home yeah. will have a gadget yeah. 
that he that the kid can always operate you know yes they have this kid gets a buy a gadget from your house yes. at the age of 5 when this kid grows up to 18 years old unaanza kumpatia vitu zingine kama sijui what do you call them yeah. these funny funny things that you give i mean are you this enchanting this kid or are you developing this kid? you have not completed the analogy then you are doing a very good narrative yeah now my kid has a gadget has a yeah. smartphone yeah my kid has got uh, you know um yeah, a laptop. laptop at home yes yeah but in the store yeah. we have a wheelbarrow for 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 who for for the, for the very very for kid. the same home for the very kid no for the same home that the, the child will not use a laptop to go and carry the manure to go and put for the the plants <laughs> they will not use a laptop to go and carry the manure to go and uh, you know fertil- uh, you know fertil- uh, fertilize the the the, 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 the vegetables mm. See, life is very very practical. This is this is why where the smart guy Ruto is running away with everything. Politics is too local, too basic that if you put that wheelbarrow into context. Everybody with a laptop will be left stagnant. Oh, 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 what's the point of view because you almost uh, cut off my time. <laughs> But then uh, Marco will still insist that uh, in your store there must be a wheelbarrow yes. even if you have gadgets with the kid. Yes. And I'm wondering uh, how, uh, how, how, how will this help the kid actually become somebody who is uh, digital life. The, you believe <laughs> when you look at Jubilee agenda for education in this country. Yeah. They want to provide laptops yeah. for digital. And in fact they they called Raila during that time mm. it was analog. Yeah. And now they are coming with the mkokoteni mm-hmm. you know somebody is doing a mkokoteni business not because he likes it mm-hmm. or is pulling a, 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 a wheelbarrow in the streets it's not because he likes it it is because he has lacked another job opportunity mm-hmm. it's an alternative yeah, it's, it's an alternative. yeah so this guy is struggling and this is what the 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 the, the, the UDA wing mm-hmm. of jubilee this is what they are bringing to the people mind you every year this country produces more than 500,000 uh, graduates, graduates out there and they are left there like just like that and we want a solution to this fixing these needs you need to have a plan for the economy of this country so that these people when they they graduate they find some decent jobs to do not mm-hmm. that you you tell them you go and hustle on the streets <laughs> let me tell you why the president let me tell you as you finish okay, why okay. the president oh, finds oh, it very hard oh, even to okay, fight oh, uh, okay, the okay, river okay, story oh, okay that's okay that's kazim tani kazim tani actually is being is a, a government project mm-hmm. which is keeping which is being run even by graduates of this country yeah. their work is using wheelbarrows but it's not even well managed in the first place. Uh, uh, we, 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 we talking about it's not even well managed. Every, look at people who are doing it. It's not even nice. But they're using you wheelbarrows. Know, uh, people to me my message is they are using wheelbarrows. Okay. To do <laughs> the cleaning and the <laughs> pay. So, so if they, you if you dispute uh, wheelbarrow um, look at look at this Mr. Makowiti. Yeah. Uh, what I'm struggling that Kenyans get to understand at this point is that just how will a wheelbarrow transform lives in the 21st century? That is what must come out clearly. The wheelbarrow, wheelbarrow is, is not very bad. symbolic. Very very symbolic. It represents the hustle. But outside that wheelbarrow you've seen washing machines that have been uh, given out by uh, this guy you've seen hair hair dryers I mean, uh, you, you, you. that's not sustainable <laughs> Those are in terms of economy that's not even sustainable uh, i think uh, it's uh, it's so interesting and uh, apparently we can't even continue because of time this is what now we call politics 101 it's the way it is mako it is struggling to give us the uh, well the, the meaning and the contextual understanding of a wheelbarrow and its practicality in the present politics in the 21st century and see here we are told are uh, angling on the economic side of things wanting to make things economically sensible to Kenyans. I don't know how well you've taken this or where you've understood it from. However, I want to give you just a half a minute to just mention an event that captured your imagination over this week, please. I'll start with you, uh, Mr. Okeo, as you face uh, uh, the audience. Just what captured your imagination? Thank you very much, Nick. Uh, in less in less than a minute can you? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, if you look at this country in terms of uh, politics currently and you find that there's a lot of war. People are fighting and it is about uh, 2022. We do not want to see this. This is uh, very wrong for the country even for the children to see that people are fighting for something which is not even 
uh, three months away, it's 18 months to come. And you find that people are already fighting for this, the, 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 for the politics in this country. It is very wrong and it, it's condemned in the strongest terms. And uh, Marco Witte, uh, I thank you very much for hosting us today. And the next time... Uh, Nick, not Marco Witte. Uh, Marco Witte is a guest like you. <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your input. Marco Witte, just uh, what captured your attention. And this time around, I hope uh, the Wilbur will not find its way out in this. Just uh, an event. Three that things. Is, yeah. the, um, the three major events. Mm. One, um, an icon in New Zealand, Simeon Yachai, was laid to rest. He was very powerful. He's being laid to rest tomorrow, the 15th. Yeah. I thought it was today or Friday. This week was, uh, was the on Mass on Monday on the 15th with yeah. the time to lay him to rest. Yeah. So it's, uh, it was a, 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 a week, uh, you know, an event that mm. has happened this week. Yeah. He's resting, he's left a lot of orphans, he's left a lot of things to learn from. Mm -hmm. But also, he was very, very rich. Right? He amassed a lot of wealth during his reign as a senior child. My point is, I want our leaders to learn that uh, in humility, you can serve the people and still leave a very good legacy. There is enough for everyone in this world. But there isn't enough for people who are valuable at all. Well. Two, uh, so Nyachai was Nyachai was one of the most passionate. He amassed wealth that you think was unprocedural, or what is what is your what is your point? No, my point is that he, he amassed wealth mm. procedurally, or procedurally, or because he was, okay. a, he was he was he was one of those leaders who was against corruption. Thank you. Yeah. Two, the 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 the, the um, uh, CBC. Competent based curricula mm -hmm. was there's a, a commission that is going to oversee the uh, materialization of the CBC, uh, which was launched this week by the president. And it's very important for our parents and our teachers to be keen on what it takes and what is required uh, for the children to transition through uh, because now there's the, the, the lower grade one, two, three, and the senior grade four, five, six, they'll do an examination. When the class eight will be finishing their exams in 2023, there'll be double admission to high school. So there's need to expand the infrastructure for the primary schools, existing secondary schools. So people should be very supportive of the government in that transition. Third, which is the yeah, final, yeah, not done. is the BBI yeah. that uh, was not passed in Baringo. But I want to urge our people that BBI has got a lot of good things. Let's not kill BBI because of politics. That was already a, a, a bad indication. Our, our, our leaders should take the patience to take the people through BBI so that it passes. And if it doesn't pass, then our parliament should make sure that they, they make BBI you know, they, they, they form the, 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 uh, you know, the referendum questions in a way that you don't throw away the old BBI. We should have an option where you knock off the bad things, but you retain the good things in the BBI. So you expect IBC to bring a multi-questionnaire for the referendum? I would really support not, that. Uh, not just for one question of yes, yes or no. Yes, I would really support that. No problem. That's his feeling and that's the way he sees it. Uh, BBI, because of time, I don't think we had enough moments to really go down the BBI route. However, Baringo was actually a whole theatre of the absurdities you can imagine after um, honourable members descended on each other simply because of a document that you are supposed to really talk to one another about, disagree or agree. This is what we call decency. When somebody is honorable, you have to behave honorably. This is what we want to urge our leaders to show because we have kids around, we have youths around, we have people who look at you as mentors and people who are supposed to be their role models. So please give these people what is supposed to be best in your opinion as leaders. Avoid public fights and sparks that actually are unnecessary.
This has been the Cardinal Talk Show. Thank you, Mr. Okeo from ANC Party. And uh, for the first time, you're hosting somebody from the ANC Party, which is so nice. And uh, Mr. Marco Witi, who at this moment, we can't say whether he's uh, part of the UDA or Jubilee, <laughs> but uh, we know he's uh, part of uh, the ruling <laughs> system. What is that? He says the Tanga Tanga. Anyway, all that is work in progress and is what makes Kenya what it is. Yes, it's politics. But again, responsibility is the key in this. Do politics, but so responsibly. Until we meet again next week, I've been your host, Nico Kelo. Have yourselves a lovely week ahead.